All right, on today's Maker Mashup, we are on day three of our 3D printer build. All right, so we're at day three here, and these are all the parts for our X carriage. Uh, we don't have the nozzle in here, but we do have the rest of the parts. So what we're going to be working on today is Danny here is going to be assembling our X carriage and all the links for these parts are going to be in the description. So if you need help with any of this, don't forget to check out our discord where it's an online maker space. You can talk with other makers and get help with everything. So today we're going to focus on the X carriage. So let's get to work. So let's review what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna to go over the different parts that we're gonna to need to assemble this. Then we're going to assemble the left side of the carriage mount, and this will include some bearings. And then we're going to assemble the right side of the carriage mount, which includes the tensioner for the belt. Uh, then we're gonna assemble the X carriage. And then finally, we're gonna put the entire X carriage assembly together, and that will get us ready to mount that on the printer in our next video. So the parts for today, we're gonna to need seven dry lint bearings. We're gonna need one left carriage mount that's 3D printed. We're also gonna need one right carriage mount and tensioner. These are all 3D printed parts there. We're going to need bearings, washers, and screws for the tensioner assembly. We're also going to need one X carriage assembly. This is a lot of different 3D printed parts. Then we're going to need two 400 millimeter rods. And then we're also going to need two of the 350 millimeter lead screws. Now this is technically for the Z axis and we're only going to be using the brass nuts to finish these assemblies today. Then we're also going to need an assortment of M3, M4, and M5 screws and nuts. And I've linked all of these parts down in the description, including a couple of screw assortments that you'll find really helpful for this project. We start by just inserting the dry lint bearings right into the carriage assembly here. You'll need a little bit of pressure, uh, but they go in pretty easily. Once you have the bearings in place, the next step is to insert this brass nut from the Z axis. And then you're just gonna want to use a couple of these small M3 screws to put the bolt on in there. And then that side of the carriage is all ready to go. So with the right side carriage, we're gonna insert a couple of socket head M3 screws. And what these M3 screws are going to be is something for the tensioner screws to push off of. You can see here, we've already installed the brass nut that is just like the other carriage. You're just gonna install that brass nut the same way. We also did not capture the video for, but you can see in the picture here, the tensioner we've already inserted the bearing. It's really just as simple as inserting the bearing between the two washers and then putting a nut through it. So once you have those pieces done and you've inserted these other screws to push off of, the next piece will be to assemble the remaining part of the tensioner. So now we're gonna insert a couple of M3 nuts in here. And then once we've inserted those nuts, we're gonna go ahead and put M3 screws all the way through. And then those are the screws that will push off of the socket cap screws in the right carriage mount. Now we're gonna attach the pillow blocks. You can see here that we already inserted the dry lint bearing into this. You're gonna to wanna to do that for all three of these pillow blocks. And then the next step is to really just insert an M3 screw into there. And then you're gonna to want to uh, just put a nut on the end of it. Now, something to note here is that you'll see where there's an inset piece on the other side of this. You'll only want to attach a two or three, depending on uh, which pillow block you're installing screws. Uh, the rest of that will become obvious later as we assemble the rest of the carriage. One tip that I can suggest here is as you're doing this, make sure that you don't tighten these all the way down during this step. And the reason for that is so that way you can align everything and then tighten it up. So everything really should just be finger tight here. 
Now that we've got this assembled, the next step here is to go ahead and attach the part that's actually going to hold the nozzle. The nice part about this design that I liked a lot was the fact that you can actually switch out this portion of the nozzle only. So you could attach a pen later on to do to turn your printer into a plotter, or you could have a laser assembly. So the nice thing is, is that this really gives you the ability to upgrade later on uh, to switch out different things on your nozzle, and you just have to swap out the bolts. And Danny's just putting in the last of these nuts. And this is exactly why I said you're not going to want to attach all of these because you had to put the nozzle attachment on the other side. So as you can see here, once you've got this in place, we still don't want to tighten this up completely uh, because we've got a few more things to do and you don't want to tighten these up until it's actually on the linear rods. So now we're just going to insert the rods into this assembled part. You need to make sure that this is a nice snug fit. Just go ahead and insert each one of these rods. And then next we're going to slide the carriage on. Now we're just going to slide this carriage on and you'll see this slide smoothly on here. And the reason why is because we didn't tighten those screws yet. Once we have this on, our next step is to go ahead and put the left side of the carriage on. And you'll see here that we have the brass nuts pointing the same direction and that the nozzle is also pointing down. Now, some people assemble this the other way. I like this way because it makes leveling the Z axis just a bit easier. Now that you have the carriage all assembled, you're gonna to wanna to go back and tighten these nuts up. And I can only recommend that you tighten these only as much as necessary. If you tighten them too much, it will clamp down on that dry limb bearing. And then what happens is, is it binds the bearing against the rod. So you just need to tighten it, but you still need to make sure that it does traverse the entire length of the carriage and uh, does that smoothly. The last step in our assembly today is to just attach the nozzle piece. This is actually for the fan and all that we're going to do here is put this on the carriage and insert the two screws. And then what will happen is later on when we did the electronics, you'll see that a 50 millimeter fan will go on the top here and that will blow the air for your part cooling. So that'll be in a future video. All right. So that's it for day three. What we've got here now is Danny has the entire X carriage assembled. And the next steps are going to be to attach this to the printer, which then becomes the Z axis. And we're going to be covering that in our next video. So I hope that you liked the video today. If you did, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you get updates on our next step of this printer. So thanks again for watching and have yourselves a great day.